Wow. Happy, happy, happy Wednesday. We made it to a hump day and I forgot to look at my thermometer. But you know, it's one of those mix, mix bags. As I'm driving, I'm noticing it's taking a little bit longer to get home than it normally does. And this really is a mixed blessing because more traffic means more people are getting back to work into the office, which means that maybe our economy is getting back back on and we could see stock market gains again. But one thing that we won't see is a second term for Lori Lightfoot in Chicago. I don't know what comes after her. I don't know if the person replacing her will be any better. Only time will tell. Now I do know with Austin, it doesn't look like the new mayor is going to be any better. But we'll see. Of course, Chicago voters and Mary Mayor Lori Lightfoot's bid for re-election and challenges Vallis and Johnson's head off to April runoff. And she pretty much came in third. Lori Lightfoot loses bid for second term as Chicago mayor Tuesday in the nation's third largest city after facing widespread criticism over her divisive leadership and city's increase in crime. I mean, that's that's to say something. I mean, I've heard stories that Chicago's really crime rate, especially in the southern Chicago. And to increase the crime that's already crime ridden is an achievement in itself. But Paula Vallis and Brandon Johnson will advance in the April 4th runoff will be the next mayor of Chicago after none of the nine candidates won the majority in the official nonpartisan election. Although they're pretty much all Democrats. Same thing with here in Austin. Either a Democrat or a Democratic Socialist of America. That's really the only way to win. Hopefully Austin can be turned around. But historically, who knows. Lightfoot, who made history in 2019 when she became the first black woman and first openly gay person to serve as mayor, fell in popularity after Chicago saw a spike in crime following the coronavirus pandemic. I think that was happening prior. Since then, opponents have blamed her for the increase in crime and criticized her as being divisive, an orderly, contentious leader. She also received criticism of her handling a 11-day teacher strike the COVID-19 pandemic and protests this summer 2020. Speakers are speaking to supporters Tuesday night. Lightfield called for Chicago's mayor the honor of a lifetime. Regardless of tonight's outcome, we fought for the rights. We fought the right fights as we put the city on a better path. Lightfoot said she told her fellow mayors around the country not to fear being bold Public safety has been the key ballot issue in the Windy City. Local elections where policies on crime have increased, resonated with voters, residents, also made selections for other local office, including the representative on the city's new police district council and latest effort to improve police oversight and accountability. Yeah, so Austin has two propositions, Prop A and Prop B, to deal with oversight. And I think both of the oversights are um, not that I'm against civilian oversight of police. I think more oversight is always good, but sometimes too much oversight or the wrong people doing the oversight can lead to police issues to where they're not able to do their job due to political reasons. Like if someone that hates cops and wants to see cops go away, they could be ruling against cops that have were rightfully or legally right, but because they don't like cops, they could like pretty much say they uh, acted too aggressively, so they must be fired. Kind of the light on crime approach 
that Chicago's probably seen, and of course across this country. There's a push to be light on crime, which causes more crime because there's no punishment, there's no accountability. Which I see an issue with. I mean, you don't want to be too heavy-handed, but you don't want to be too light-handed either. Paul Vallis, 69. I mean, that's a really good age. He's a former head of Chicago Public Schools and scored endorsements from the Chicago Police Union and the Chicago Tribune Editorial Board. His campaign is focused on law and order, school choice. Wow. That's um, pretty bold of him. And reformed the city's finances. Fallis previously ran for mayor in Chicago and for governor and lieutenant governor in Illinois. His opponents had criticized him being too conservative to lead a Democratic stronghold. You know, maybe he's a blue dog Democrat. We used to have those. They were pretty much conservative Democrats. They still believe in the social policies, but they didn't believe in going full-blown socialists. They still believe in civil liberties, you know, right to privacy, free speech. But they had some social issues that they wanted to spend money on. But they were also very financially re responsible. Brandon Johnson, 46, is a former teacher who served on the Cooks County Board of Commissioners. According to the Associated Press, Johnson received $1 million from the Chicago Teachers Union for his campaign and support of several other progressive organizations, including the United Working Families. The former teacher and union organizers has argued that the answer to addressing crime is not more money for the police, but more investment in mental health care, education, jobs, affordable housing. And he was accused by rivals such as Lightfoot wanting to defund the police. I don't know if Larry... I don't know if Lightfoot wanted to defund the police. I'm not too sure and don't really care because she's no longer mayor. What are the key issues in Chicago mayor election? Most well, Chicago voters said crime is the top issue. The poll found violent crime rose in cities across the nation during the pandemic, including Chicago, where carjackings and shootings soared, while the homicides and shootings in Chicago fell by double digits percentages last year from the year prior. Other types of crimes like robbery rose. According to city data, candidates have laid out various plans to address the issues, including hiring more police officers, bringing back retired officers, removing the sitting police chief, and adding a witness protection program, eliminating the city's gang database, and instituting programs designed to address the root cause of crime. I mean, the root cause of crime could be many things. One is crime of opportunity, crimes because there's not enough resources into the neighborhood, bad behavior, bad parenting behaviors, I should say. I mean, when you have a culture that, I don't know, bumps NWA or promotes a life of crime, you're going to tend to raise people that are going to have that type of mindset. When you have bongs bumping how to sell crack or gangbang, there's a good chance that you're going to grow up gangbanging. Especially if those people are not telling you that this is entertainment, this is expressing inner city history, and you should maybe not live a life like that because it may be easy money, but it's not honest money. So there's a lot of root causes. I mean, other key issues include affordable housing and state public schools and public transit. What Chicago's new police district, what are Chicago's new police district? Resident on Tuesday also cast votes as part of the city new civilian police oversight model in 2021 in the wake of the murder of George Floyd and successful racial justice protests. I mean, I'm not going to deny that there's racial justice or there's a divide, but I do think we do need to hold people accountable, but at the same time, you, I do understand that there is a community that's more affected by being held accountable for actions. 
mainly because they're the ones doing the actions. So maybe instead of, I'm not even saying everyone, but maybe look into promoting a healthy relationship between the police and the people living in cities or just living in the hood to maybe root out gangbangers that have no desire to change and actually rebuild the trust between the police and the people that they're there to serve and protect is definitely one way of going about it. City leaders have passed ordinance creating two bodies, citywide commission and district council, aimed at improving community police re relations. I mean, all you gotta do is have cops go into events or host, uh, host a public event to meet the police have barbecue, cook-offs, or whatever you want to do. You know, you just have public events to allow citizens to interact with the police, to get to know the police, to build on that trust. I mean, it's not really rocket scientists here. I mean, it's some people just want to vent and yet have events to let them vent and have the cops just acknowledge and be understanding. Because at the end of the day, police are also part of the community. They live in the community. They pay taxes into the community. They pay for food that's supplied by the city through many storefronts. They have to go buy school supplies for their kids. They send their kids to school. And they just want a safe neighborhood. I mean, there's a minority of them. They're bad apples. But... You just need to get them more involved in the community is what I'm saying. Voters elected three people to serve on the councils in each of the city's 22 police districts. The council are tasked with building stronger connections between the police and the community at a district level, holding monthly public meetings, working with the community to get input on police department policies and practices and more. I'm not saying you got to... Gonna sound like a broken record if you want police relations to improve. You need a police chief that's out there every day in the public hosting festivals. I mean, maybe not festivals, but public gatherings, or maybe sponsoring a tournament, a neighborhood tournament. No cops against the hood or resident or residents. I mean, however you want to do it, just to humanize the police, build a trusting relationship between the members of society and the police, and they're more likely to call the police instead of the fire department whenever they witness a crime. I mean, I'm not saying that one side is wrong, the other side's right. It takes, it takes two parties wanting to work together with a common goal and be willing to listen to each other. That's all I'm saying. And you can't build that trust because there's a lot of trust loss. And as you just look at this one, you want to dig deeper. You just can't shoot a 12 year old child for literally no reason. The attorney says, I don't know what that is about. It's probably police brutality. I don't know. Let's find out. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. This, this video has gone long enough. That is my video. Leave a comment down below. Are you happy that Lori Lightfoot lost her re-election bid? Are you worried what's going to come next? Is it going to be better or worse? I honestly don't know if it's going to be more the same or worse. There might be a hope that is better, but only time will tell. That being said, that is my video for today. And have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.